Hi, it's Dr. Adam. Let's talk about molecular orbital theory. So far we have learned about atomic orbitals, which can be hybridized to form molecular orbitals. One of the useful features of the new shapes generated by molecular orbitals is that we can overlap them to form covalent bonds. The simplest example is for hydrogen. Each hydrogen atom has one electron in an s orbital to form a sigma bond. The atomic orbitals overlap to form the molecular orbital, which is where the electrons will stay to form the dihydrogen molecule. This new orbital, which we will call a bonding sigma orbital, has a lower energy than the atomic 1s orbitals because of the increased electrostatic attraction from the other nucleus. Because the total number of orbitals must be conserved, there is a higher energy anti-bonding orbital. If we were to place electrons here, the system would be destabilized. A bonding orbital will tend to place electron density between the nuclei so as to increase their attraction. An antibonding orbital will tend to concentrate electron density away from the area between the nuclei, reducing attraction. To understand how an atom can make multiple bonds, we utilize orbital hybridization. Methane is a good example as the carbon atom here is making four different bonds to hydrogen atoms. It hybridizes its 2s and all of its 2p orbitals, obtaining an sp3 hybridized carbon atom. In order to form the four bonds, carbon must first distribute its four valence electrons into each of its four valence orbitals by promoting one of the s electrons to an empty p orbital. The orbitals can then be hybridized to form four sp3 orbitals of identical energy, or degenerate. These degenerate orbitals are all half-filled and can accept one other electron which will come from the other atoms in the covalent bond. Atoms do not always need to use all of their orbitals for hybridization. Methane is of course sp3 hybridized and uses all of its valence electrons, but sometimes there are only three electron domains with the carbons being sp2 hybridized, or even just two electron domains with the carbon atom being sp hybridized. sp2 hybridized orbitals in ethene Three orbitals will be hybridized to give the sp2 carbon. This leaves one unhybridized electron in a 2p orbital. Through the overlap of these orbitals, the pi bond is formed, which is the second bond in the double bond. A similar approach can be used to describe the bonding in ethyne. The carbon is sp hybridized, meaning the 2s orbital and one 2p orbital are hybridized to obtain two sp hybridized orbitals. This leaves two unhybridized orbitals in each carbon which can overlap to form the two pi bonds in ethyne. But of course, hybridization is a descriptive model. The bonding in ethyne, and even ethene, can be understood fully using VSEPR theory. Occasionally, molecular orbital diagrams have to be prepared for our systems. To do that, we place each atom or moiety on the left or right and the combined orbitals in the center. Molecular orbital diagrams can be used to calculate the bond order of a particular interaction. Bond order is the number of bonding electrons minus the number of antibonding electrons divided by 2. For hydrogen, this is 2 bonding electrons minus 0 antibonding electrons divided by 2, giving 1, which is the sigma bond in the hydrogen molecule. Let's turn to dioxygen. Here, the atomic electronic configuration for each oxygen is written out explicitly. In the center, we have the molecular orbitals. The atomic orbitals of similar energy can form to combine molecular orbitals. The two 1s orbitals combine to make a sigma and sigma star orbital. The same happens with the 2s orbitals. For the two p orbitals, we now have six total p orbitals to combine. For this, we obtain a sigma and sigma star as before, but now we also have pi and pi star orbitals that form the basis of pi bonds. The molecular orbitals are then filled from the atomic orbitals, from lowest to highest energy. The filling of the molecular orbitals allows the calculation of the bond order, giving a value of 2. This leads to the double bond of oxygen. If we look at dinitrogen, as before, one atom on each side and the molecular orbitals in the center. Also as before, molecular orbitals are formed between atomic orbitals of similar energy. The molecular orbitals are then filled up from the atomic orbitals, starting with the lowest energy. This is then used to calculate the bond order. 
10 electrons in bonding orbitals and 4 in antibonding give a bond order of 3. This provides a solution to the nitrogen triple bond observed. A short note on the molecular orbital diagram of dinitrogen. Whilst the general rule is that the sigma 2p orbitals have lower energy than the 2p pi orbitals, experimental evidence has shown that in dinitrogen the pi 2p orbitals are lower in energy. Without experimental evidence though, there is no way to know that the sigma and pi order is reversed. Not all molecules are homonuclear and many are heteronuclear, made up of more than one atom. In this instance, we need to consider the relative energy levels of the atomic orbitals more closely, because the 2s of fluorine is 26 electron volts lower in energy than the 1s of hydrogen, there is little interaction between them. The 2pz of fluorine, though, has a similar energy and can interact with the 1s of hydrogen to form sigma bonding and antibonding orbitals. The other two 2p orbitals of fluorine are non-bonding as they don't have a hydrogen orbital to interact with. The 1s fluorine orbital is too low in energy to interact with the hydrogen atomic orbitals. The bond order of HF is 1 because there are only two bonding electrons and zero antibonding electrons. Non-bonding electrons do not contribute to the bond order. Let's check comprehension. 